When it comes to ports, some things change and some things remain the same. The root port, for example, is the same. There is still one root port per switch and it still points out the best path to the root bridge. The only exception, of course, is the root bridge itself, which does not have any root ports. All ports on the root bridge are always designated ports. Speaking of designated ports, they're the same too. These are ports that point away from the root bridge and can still forward regular traffic. Each network segment can only have one designated port. If there were more than one, there would be a loop. What do I mean though when I say network segment? In nearly all cases these days, this is a link between two switches. The segment is the link itself, and there are only two devices on this segment. But a more complicated scenario is where you might have an old fashioned hub or a dumb switch or something like that. In a case like this, more than one device can connect to the single segment. This is rare these days though. We shouldn't be seeing hubs anymore, but it is still possible, so be aware of it. If this does happen, if you do find a hub in your network, be aware that you can only have one designated port for the entire segment. If there was more than one, we would definitely have a loop. Therefore, one of these ports would need to be blocking instead. The blocking port is where things get interesting. Blocking ports can now be categorized as either alternate ports or backup ports. Any type of blocking port will block regular traffic, but still allow BP to use. In fact, a port must be receiving BP to use to be in a blocking state. Of course, you might wonder why this is the case. First, remember that all switches send BP to use to their neighbors. If a port is not receiving BP to use, then it is not connected to another switch. It's probably connected to something like a PC, a printer, a server, or some other end device. We can't create loops on interfaces connected to these devices, so these ports do not need to be blocking. As I just mentioned, blocking ports can be alternate or backup. An alternate port is one that has received a superior BPDU from a different switch in the same network segment. The network segment in this case is just that link between the two switches. This here is an alternate port, as it is an alternate path to the root bridge. It's ready to take over if the current root port fails. Backup ports come into play when there is a shared segment. That is, something like a hub that allows two or more switches to connect to each other. In our example, one switch has two links. One link on this switch becomes designated. On the other switch, the port is blocking. This would be an alternate port as we just discussed. Now back on the switch with two links, something interesting will happen. The switch will see its own BP to use. That is, each port will send BP to use, and the other port will receive them. Only one of these can be designated though, so the other must be blocking. But because the switch receives a BPDU from itself, the blocking port will be a backup port. It's called a backup port as it's the backup to this segment. Just remember, as we previously said, that hubs are rare, so you're unlikely to see backup ports. If you do see backup ports in your network, you probably have a hub somewhere, and you should probably take steps to replace them. We can examine the output of show spanning tree to see these port types. Here we can see the role, which would be root, designated, alternate, or backup, the status, which can be forwarding or blocking, and of course the cost, which we spoke about last video. The cost is determined by the speed of the port. There may be times when we want to override this though, Perhaps we want to make traffic flow over a different path for troubleshooting purposes. To do this, we configure an interface, and then we enter the spanning tree cost command. The cost is any numerical value. Of course, we should verify our change with show spanning tree. And you'll see here that the cost has changed. This has in effect changed which ports are root and which are alternate. So have a look at this topology. Can you figure out what would happen, from a spanning tree point of view, if the red link were to break? 